It had been only moments since Cell and Android 19 had met, and right away, there were several red flags that the Bugman noticed. For one, when the two landed in a warm, secluded grassland, 19 immediately started to wander around. Though Cell had told her all about her origins as an android, and how she was created to be his partner, it seemed all that information went out the window once she had seen a butterfly fluttering about within the waist-high grass. Her eyes lit up and she eyed it with the utmost of focus, watching this bug as it went about its day. Cell couldn't understand this interest in an insect like that. It had no power to speak of, no intelligence, nothing a powerful, beautiful being like her could relate to. And yet, her eyes were glued to it, something which made Cell a little jealous. After incinerating the bug, he walked over and asked what that was all about. The girl simply pouted and asked why'd he do such a thing, refusing to answer his question without an answer to hers. That creature was beneath us. We are the superior beings on this planet, created from the best of the best and molded into the perfect blend of those who came before us. There were better uses of our time, such as discussing our plans for galactic domination. Cell smirked, hoping this would get the girl's attention, and it did, just not as he had hoped. Galactic domination? Like, taking over all of that? Nineteen pointed up into the sky, which had just started to darken, revealing the faint glow of the stars. Yes, all of that. What do you not get about such a simple phrase? Cell snapped, wondering how creation of Dr. Jero could possibly be so naive. This caused Nineteen to back away, her eyes tearing up. Cell was dumbfounded, then disappointed once he realized the situation. It would seem releasing the girl early had side effects, one of which was her decreased intelligence. While powerful and physically mature, she was mentally just a child. This disgusted Zell, thinking this to be a sick joke on the doctor's part, one final curse put on him from the grave. The Bugman considered getting rid of this girl, but then, just like before, there'd be no one in this world that was just like him. A monster. Well, since she was clearly too young to help him out, he'd just do what he did with Piccolo. He'd train her to become cruel and ruthless, become what it truly meant to be a bio-android. Over the next couple of years, Cell watched Goku and Piccolo grow and train together, while also training Android 19, despite her distaste for fighting. She soon began to resent Cell, something he knew, but whenever she grew angry or even hateful towards him, she showed off immense potential. Her power easily rivaled that of Cell's, even after his Zenkai from 16's explosion, something that made the Bugman a little nervous. Her regenerative properties were also a marvel to behold, as without even thinking about it, she instantly recovered from any damage. It was possible that instead of building the original 17 and 18, Jero and Wheelow had combined them into this girl, making her the perfect being. Though Cell was positive that if that were the case, they would have hooked her up to the supercomputer. One thing that did give Cell hope for this girl, though, was the fact that she did have an immense desire to eat, or absorb people, like he did. While 19 did her best to resist this hunger, every three months or so she'd go out and devour an entire town's worth of people. Cell enjoyed watching her go on these rampages, as it proved they weren't so different, though he did question why Jero gave her a candy beam instead of a stinger like he had. Oh well, it didn't really matter, did it? Nineteen was always too depressed to spar after binge eating like that, so Cell took the time to train himself, preparing for the eventual rebellion he knew Nineteen would attempt. Though, this never came, 
as whenever he wanted to spar, she reluctantly participated. Whenever he wanted to switch locations to avoid detection, she followed him. Whenever he required sustenance and wanted her to watch, to see that this was their fate, she watched on. While 19 often had a disgusted or even lifeless look in her eyes, she never left Cell's side. She knew that without Cell, she'd be all alone. Just another monster in some people's folklore for the rest of her life. So, as much as she hated Cell and herself for having to devour those people, she stuck around. It wasn't all bad though, as whenever Cell wasn't around, she got to wander in the nearby forest and observe the various animals. It was absolutely beautiful how the woods came to life. The tweet of the birds, the scurrying and chit chat of the squirrels, even the majestic form of deer as they just went about their day. She loved being in the forest as it gave her a sense of peace and belonging that no other place afforded her. Here, she could be more than just another number, more than just the artificial being she was made to be. She'd never told Cell, but she too had come up with a name, one she thought fit what little she knew of the human template she was based off of. Brief memories of a woman about her height and build were all 19 had. Said figure had long, bushy auburn hair with either blue or red eyes, as it always seemed to change, though 19 preferred the red variant as it matched her own when she felt passionate about something. With all that red and her relation to Cell, all 19 could conjure up for her name was Hema, relating it to blood in a way though she thought it was a beautiful metaphor for her as a person, a living, breathing creature, rather than the cold, calculating machine that Cell tried to be. Though her time spent as Hema in the forest was always so short, she enjoyed it, but when that time ended, she'd have to become 19 once again, and live up to those expectations placed on her as an android. Another year passed, and the two sensed a rather high battle power heading in their direction. Cell had become pretty cocky in this time of peace, and so no longer hid his power, practically inviting anyone to challenge him at any time. Once the two powers arrived in the grasslands, Cell was happy to see Vegeta and Nappa, eager to challenge this apparent monster that scared Kui so much. The Bugman was surprised that it took them so long to get here, but was excited nonetheless, as this meant he could begin his plans for Goku. A brief fight ensued, in which Cell proceeded to demolish the two Saiyans. While he didn't find much use in Nappa being alive, he figured, the more the merrier, right? So, he made these two a deal. The Saiyan anatomy is almost one for one with humans which means you two should have about 206 bones in those weak bodies of yours. They say a Saiyan grows more powerful the closer he is to death. So what would happen if I, say, half killed you? Cell went on to break exactly 103 bones within each Saiyan, something that took an excruciating amount of time, though he loved every second of it. Nappa had passed out during this torture, though Vegeta never once fainted or looked away, instead cursing the monster out for as long as he could. Once over, Cell used the two scouters to call Kui over, knowing the coward was nearby, observing what had happened. When the catfish came out, shaking in his boots, Cell ordered him to carry Vegeta and Nappa to a place called Korin Tower on Earth saying it'd have something that would instantly heal those two. The soldier asked why he had to follow such an order, stating that after what happened last time, he was now stronger than even Zarbon. Cell glared at Kui, asking if he really needed to answer that. But before the soldier could answer, 19 flew in, reaching out towards the two Saiyans and laying a hand on each of them. Within seconds, the two had been fully restored, gaining an immense amount of power, both now surpassing Kui, 
something he was sure to know when reading their power levels. Uh, since when have you been able to do such a thing, 19? Uh, I don't... Hima backed away, realizing she had revealed one of many abilities she had discovered while alone in the woods. She thought Cell would be angry at her for not sharing this information with him, but she really thought it was of no consequence since, you know, he could heal himself. Hmm, we can make great use of such an ability, but next time, don't heal anyone without asking first. I wanted those two to feel that pain for just a little longer. Cell swiftly beat down the two Saiyans once more, all while smirking towards Kui, who needed a change of pants to say the least. Once all was said and done, Kui carried the two off while the Bugman flew off to see what had become of Raditz. Interestingly, the low-class warrior was still fighting his brother. It seems he had tried to steal Gohan, but with Goku being much stronger, he was able to thwart such an action. The two were pretty even, though Raditz, like his brother, only grew stronger as the battle went on, soon overtaking Goku once more. Luckily, Piccolo had been standing nearby and was watching the fight closely, stepping in just as Raditz was about to use a Shining Friday. The Namekian flew in and grabbed the Saiyan's tail, paralyzing him before delivering a destructive uppercut. This knocked the Saiyan out, and while Piccolo had the idea to finish him off, both he and Goku figured they should at least question him. Goku gets patched up, and the two await Raditz's awakening, and then question him further. Piccolo vaguely knows about the Frieza Force from Cell, but apparently he had neglected to mention that Raditz was related to Goku. Well, after the low-class warrior tries to run, Piccolo figures there was a reason he wasn't remembered. The Saiyan was nothing like Goku, ruthless when he was on top, but cowardly when outmatched. He reconsidered finishing off the evil Saiyan, though Goku stopped him, since this guy was vaguely family. While Goku never really cared about being a Saiyan in the original timeline, ever since getting that bombshell from Piccolo, who had learned of his own origins and often expressed interest in going to Namek, it made Goku curious about the Saiyans and his own origin. While meeting Raditz did leave a bad taste in his mouth, Goku hoped his older brother could see the light, like Piccolo had. Raditz tried to run and was frantically flying away. However, once he got to where his pod was and found it destroyed, he had no place to run. Both Vegeta and Nappa's pods had been destroyed as well. Who would do such a thing? Now they were trapped on this backwater planet. Well, once Cell revealed himself, saying he was the one to destroy the pods, Raditz immediately attacked. Hmm, no wonder there's so little data on you. You're pathetic. There's hardly any form, any finesse to your fighting style. Even your little brother has better technique. Cell said as he effortlessly dodged every attack. Oh, don't you underestimate the power of a Sade warrior. You'll see just how much of a punch I pack. Raditz flew back, charging up a Shining Friday and throwing it directly at the bug, only to freeze up in terror as Cell continued walking towards him. Raditz tried to fly away, attempting to leave Piccolo and Goku, who had just caught up, there to buy time. But Cell was faster, grabbing onto his leg and slamming him into the earth. The android then stomps on Rat's back, a loud crunch sounding out, before he charges straight towards Goku. But that's when Piccolo steps in, clashing briefly with Cell. Hmm, <laughs> it's been a while, master. Allow me to show you just how much I've... Piccolo was silenced as a stinger was shoved into his stomach, and he began to get absorbed. Don't get in my way, Junior. I have a date with Son Goku. He needs to be taught a valuable lesson. Once Piccolo was weakened, Cell threw him to the side, walking over and introducing himself. Son Goku, the Earth's greatest defender. I've come to end your life, so please, fight me with all you've got. The Saiyan fought an all-out battle with Cell, though nothing he did could even put a scratch on the creature, much less defeat him. 
Cell continuously gravely injured the Saiyan, having 19 fly in and heal him up, all while Piccolo and Raditz watched from the sidelines. Eventually, after the Saiyan had grown considerably, Cell was satisfied and plunged his hand straight through Goku's chest. Surprisingly, this angered Raditz, who launched a beam right at the Bugman, though this did nothing to him. Nineteen went in to heal Goku, but was stopped by Cell, who told her this was all a part of his plan. He then turned towards Pickle and Rats, addressing them personally. You two, go give Chi-Chi and Gohan the news. I think you'll be especially surprised by Goku's kid, Raditz. With that, Hima healed the two up, and the two androids flew off. Piccolo had no idea what was going on, and with Raditz along with two other Saiyans here, he wasn't sure how the Earth would stay safe. Speaking of the Elder Saiyan, he stood up and was simply staring at his younger brother. The Namekian wasn't sure, but he thought that maybe, just maybe, he actually cared a little bit about Goku. We can revive him, you know. But that'd be pointless if we don't plan on getting rid of Cell. We can join forces, train together to become stronger than he is. Piccolo reached out to shake the Saiyan's hand, though he quickly smacked it away. Ha! Like I train with a weakling like you. My squad mates can take care of him easily. Just you wait. Nappa and Vegeta will... Raditz was quickly shut up by the arrival of Nappa, Vegeta, and Kui. Shut up, Raditz. You there, Piccolo, was it? Do tell me about that way reviving Kakarot. Piccolo goes on to explain what the Dragon Balls are, though he doesn't explain how to use them, since he doesn't trust these three at all. Once all said and done, Vegeta immediately asks to be immortal, but Piccolo refuses and then tells them that only a Namekian can ask for a wish. Luckily, the Saiyans buy this lie, though Vegeta tells him that Frieza is on the way before taking off his scouter and destroying it. You know, I too have a plan, Namekian. I'll go along with a little game of training just to learn how you can assess battle powers without a scouter. Now, you can explain all that to me on our way to see Kakarot's boy. I'm very interested in the little half-breed. But that's where we're going to be leaving things off for right now. If you guys enjoyed the video, you know what to do. But even if you don't, thank you for getting to this part of the video. You guys have a good day or night wherever you are. That's it for now. Bye-bye.